Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the ability, Father God, to bounce back. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus, that you've given me a word, Father God. I pray that it permeate, Father God, not only my soul, but somebody else's soul, Father God, that it will touch, Father God, heal, deliver, sanctify, set apart, Father God, them back to you, Jesus. Set them back to you, Father, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, and I thank you, Abba Father. Bless this message as it is your message and not mine, in Jesus Christ's name. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, kings, queens all over the earth. Uh, this message is titled today, When We Know the Good We Ought to Do. When we know the good we ought to do. This message God has given me about uh, a week or two ago. And when he gave it to me initially, uh, it was a big test. It was a test of the faith. And the, the, why I say that is, all my words have came back to test my own faith. And God just doesn't want us to merely uh, listen or recite the word, but to live it. So I feel and I know that the Father has set up tests for us to see if we mean what we say. So that's why I say that this message came back to test my faith. Uh, as we followers and as we're followers of Jesus Christ, we must have to do God's will, especially when nobody's looking. What are we doing when nobody's looking? We can fool people, but we can't fool God. We have to do and be good in times of trouble or triumph. See, it is hard being good. It is hard being good, brothers and sisters especially in a world that doesn't seem to have any good in it. We have to be careful not to run to flesh and sin. The past uh, is just the past. We got to leave it back there. Old relationships, old things that we were delivered from, we got to leave those in the rear view and not look back. God is saying that we have to not look back. And I'm guilty of looking back. Yeah, I'm guilty of looking back and revisiting old wounds and pains in my life. I made a lot of mistakes and I am ashamed of a lot of things that I did in the past. Family, I tell you the truth. I am not squeaky clean. By no means, I am not perfect. I've hurt a lot of people and let a lot of people down and I've also been let down and hurt myself. They say hurt people hurt people. I am a sinner and I am not strong without God's grace and power. First Corinthians 10, 12 through 13 says, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind and God is faithful he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out that you can endure. Hallelujah. I had to fall for a reason. That reason is for God to lift me back up and for God to make me rely on him, to allow me to rely on him. See, God knows that we're not robots. You got free will. So in the midst of falling, it is God who disciplined me. It is God who disciplined me for my unsubmissiveness to him. So he picked me back up and he had to reprimand me. Hebrews 12, 7 through 8 and verse 11 says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children for the children are not disciplined by their what for what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Verse 11 says no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. So it, it seems painful. It is painful. 
Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. When the flesh fails us, it is God who is there to pick us back up. And when he pick us up, he don't just let us go back to our ways. He got to give us a spanking on our backside. Old saying out the south is a hard head makes us soft behind. So when you keep bumping your head and we keep bumping our head, we keep falling down on our behind. Now, however, God does not want to kill us, you know, with those spankings. God does not want to kill us, but he want to heal us, family. He allows us to go through this process because he knows it produces character, a harvest of righteousness and peace. The flesh and sin produces only death. See, God will provide a way out so that we can endure the temptations of this world. God wants us to shine and to be his lights in this dark world. We are chosen by God to be salt of the earth. Second Corinthians 4, 2 through 9 says, Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone conscious, everyone's conscious in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has binded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Hallelujah. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despaired, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. As children of the most high God, we must live, we must not live in secret sin. He did not create us to live in shameful lust. God created us to let the light that he blessed us with shine and for his glory to shine. Everything done in the darkness will eventually be exposed to the light, no matter what. So we think we are hiding when running and, and tucking stuff away, God is going to eventually reveal it until he sees himself in us. So if we chase after this world, we're only going to get darkness, brothers and sisters. We have to chase after God's own hand. I'm a mere man as a mere servant of God, having to pick myself up every day of the week. And we have to stand firm to the end so that we will be saved. May this word permeate and bless and help just one or a million. In Jesus' name, amen.